on 3rd April 1973, the first mobile telephone call was made. Years passed by, so by the standards. And now, we are in the core of development in 5G. This paper proposes a resource sharing scheme to enable device-to-device -device communication in millimeter wave 5G cellular networks. Future 5G cellular networks are being developed to satisfy dramatically increasing data traffic among mobile devices. For 2017, the number of mobile phone users is forecast to reach 4.77 billion. This increasing number will lead to global bandwidth shortage. Also, to meet higher data requirements, we need a new generation cellular networks. A new generation emerges about every 10 years to significantly improve the transmission rate and support more applications. 5G cellular networks are expected to have much higher network capacity and provide multi gigabits per second data rate for each user. Communication between two users is known as device to device communication. Generally, device to device communication provides the connection between two wireless devices either directly, that is, when both the users are in line of sight, or by hopping, when there is a blockage between the two users. Device to device communication is established through base station in traditional networks. One wireless device communicates with base station, then base station conveys data to another wireless device directly or via backbone network. In millimeter wave 5G cellular network, local device to device communication can be formed to offload cellular communication. Meanwhile, global device to device communication can be formed with multi hop wireless transmission via base station between two wireless devices associated with different cells. Millimeter wave. As the name depicts, its wavelength is in order of millimeter. It is also known as extremely high frequency wave because its frequency spectrum ranges from 30 GHz to 300 GHz. The short wavelength of millimeter wave band results in difficulties in diffracting around obstacles. The millimeter wave signal have difficulties penetrating through solid materials. Example, at 40 GHz, that is a 178 dB attenuation for brick wall. The limited penetration capability could confine outdoor millimeter wave signal to street and other outdoor structures. Device to device communications are expected to be an essential feature of millimeter wave 5G cellular networks to improve network capacity and build connections between two wireless devices. Since the free space propagation loss is proportional to the square of the carrier frequency and the millimeter wave have a higher frequency range, the propagation loss in millimeter wave is much higher than that in the microwave band. A high gain directional antenna is favored to compensate for the tremendous propagation loss and to reduce the shadowing effect. Due to directional antenna and high propagation loss, millimeter wave communication has relatively low multi user interference. In millimeter wave 5G cellular networks, device to device communication may face two kinds of potential interference. One is among different local D2D communication and the other is between local D2D and D2B or B2B communication. Most of the existing work on D2D communication focus on design of optimized resource sharing algorithm by managing interference. The proposed model for the 5G cellular network is a hybrid variety of a 4G and a millimeter wave system. As we are using a millimeter wave, we gain a large bandwidth. With recent advancement in the radio frequency integrated circuit, we can build an electrical circuit which operates in the millimeter wave range as well. As for communication, we use highly directional antennas, which results in the high data rate. In contrast to the 4G cellular network, base station communicates using fiber optics, but in case of 5G network, it uses wireless medium as a backbone. We use mesh networks for rapid deployment. First, we have the data part 4G cellular network. In this, base station can be deployed based on the cell architecture. Typically, a cell can have one or two base station, which communicates using an omnidirectional antenna where it can transmit and receive power in all direction. As we are using a hybrid system, the functionality can be separated from the millimeter wave base system, where it can manage information like a SIM validity, a balance check and it can also drive a low data rate application like calls and SMS. We have a millimeter wave system where the base station uses highly directional antennas to communicate. These antennas transmit and receive powers in a specific direction. A study says for an outdoor environment, these base station communicating with directional antennas has negligible interference, which is called pseudo-wire. 
So in this article, we are dealing with the mesh network. As for functionality, it can drive high data rate multimedia applications like playing online virtual reality games in your mobile phones. Next, the important player in the 5G network architecture are wireless devices like mobile phones. These communicate with both 4G and a millimeter wave base station using directional and omnidirectional antennas. We assume that it supports a very fast transition between 4G and a millimeter wave modules. Now overall, we start with a 4G cell with a 4G base station and a millimeter wave base station and randomly chosen wireless devices and a directional link using a highly directional antennas and wire link which uses fiber optics and wireless link for 4G communication. Also, we introduce D2D, B2B and D2B links where D2D is the communication between device to device and B2B is to base station to base station and D2B is a device to a base station. Millimeter wave 5G cellular network supports multimedia applications with stringent quality of service requirements. To provide guaranteed performance, time division multiple access is adopted for millimeter wave channel access in 5G networks. The proposed architecture is a TDMA based MAC structure. The main challenge in millimeter wave MAC design is how to use the spectrum efficiently to achieve higher capacity considering millimeter wave propagation features while providing reliable high rate connections. The local device to device, base to base and device to base transmissions are handled by the base station in this MAC structure. In the proposed TDMA based MAC structure, time is partitioned into super frames, each of which are composed of M time slots called channel time allocation. Each time slot can have multiple local device to device communication, which can operate simultaneously to exploit spatial reuse. Due to the half duplex constraint, that should be at most one device to base or base to base link in each time slot. The 4G base station collect the transmission request and signaling information for millimeter wave communication by reliable 4G networks. For local communication between a transmitter and a receiver, the transmitter pulls the receiver to check connectivity. Each receiver has to pull back within an interval that is pole interframe space. The transmitter after receiving the polling response message starts to send data packets to the receiver. The receiver sends an ACK message for every successful reception. If the transmitter after polling the receiver does not get any response within the fixed interval, it triggers multi-hopping via relays. There are many existing schemes to determine relay selection. Since the main focus of this article is to enable device to device communication, we simplify the relay selection by randomly picking up a node that is close to the direct path of the source and destination with line of sight transmission available to both. Then the transmitter sends message to the receiver via relays. For effective communication, all the links share the resources. For example, a link have to use a, a time slot to access a channel for sending its data. Consider a scenario, a device to device link and a device to base station link, which uses the same resources in the same time slots T. This condition is a concurrent transmission. There is a high chances of interference, which needs to be managed efficiently. There are two possible modes for resource sharing, orthogonal sharing. A D2D and a D2B or a B2B links divides the resources. Here, there is no chances of interference, a simple for implementation, but it not utilizes the resource effectively. In other case, we have a non-orthogonal sharing where it reuses the resources and there is a chances of interference which needs to be managed efficiently. As we are enabling the reusability, we can gain a large number of users in our network. So for 5G, we need this. Before managing the resources, there are two possible cases. First, communication among millimeter wave base stations. When the two B2B links communicate using the same resources at the time slot, the interferences are negligible because they use a highly directional antenna and the communication is also for a long distance. Case 2. Communication among a D2D 
and a D2B or a B2B link. When they communicate using the same resources at the given time t, there is a high chance of interference, which needs to be managed efficiently. This article suggests a millimeter wave base station can control centrally the allocation. The article introduces a design for a resource sharing scheme. As these links rely on a line of sight communications, these channels can be designed based on the free space free transmission equation. And the transmission rate can be estimated by a Shannon capacity formula, where B is the bandwidth, SNR is the signal to noise ratio, and H is the channel gain for a single input and a single output system. And the number of time slots required for each super frame can be predetermined as all the wireless devices sends the request with the minimum average throughput required. The flow of the design starts with the wireless device with the transmission request to the 4G base station and the 4G base station decides whether it is a higher data rate. If it's not, then the lower data rate application is driven by a 4G base station. And if it's a yes, it will be redirected to millimeter wave base station where it allocates resources using a special algorithm and gives the uh, allotted time slots to the 4G space station, which in turn communicates with the wireless devices. The article tried to implement an optimization solution for resource sharing problems. The ultimate aim is to determine a set of active lengths for each time slot. So they framed the objective function as total data to be transmitted in a super frame using a variable xij with the matrix size of L cross M, where L is the number of transmitted requests and M is the number of time slot. As this is a non-integer programming problem, we can use optimization to tool to solve the problems. Yet the complexity increases exponential with the number of active links and the number of time slots. So the article suggests a heuristic resource sharing scheme. The new approach starts with the transmission request from the ith link. From that, we can calculate the number of time slots required. On the other side, we have the randomly sorted transmission links for the next super frame. Then we have a non-interfering links check. If they are non-interfering, we will allot in the current super frame. If they are in the same time slots, then we go for a concurrent condition check. The check is like a two links can operate simultaneously without interference if and only if transmitter is outside the beam width of the other receiver. If it satisfies the condition, we will allot the same link in the given time slot for a particular super frame. If not, we will move to the next super frame check. As these active link is set to use the same time slots until its throughput is met. Some important analysis. When the link uses multi-hop transmission to deal with the link blockage, relay mechanism can reduce the link outage probability, yet it is effective for the users with low mobility. Also, the proposed scheme is useful for a dense network. From the test of a 40 transmitted request in a given area, the proposed scheme manages traffic better than the other 4G cellular communication and a random selection scheme. In this paper, we have discussed the suitability of millimeter wave band for 5G cellular networks. We have also proposed a resource sharing scheme for concurrent device to device communication in millimeter wave 5G cellular networks that can significantly improve network capacity while keeping network connectivity well. To achieve high transmission rate and aggregate capacity, millimeter wave base station may be densely deployed, especially for urban areas. Mobile users may have to hand off frequently between millimeter wave base stations. Fast neighbor discovery is required in the handoff procedure for mobile users to find nearby base station and switch to the base station with better link quality. Although directional antennas offer many advantages on improving spatial reuse and network capacity, there are challenges in neighbor discovery. The article should be useful for future research on enabling device-to-device -device communication in millimeter wave 5G cellular networks. Thank you.